Soil conditions across a disturbed uh, oil and gas site can vary widely depending on the condition, moisture conditions at the time, the kind of trafficking and the kinds of machines. Uh, we're in an area that was pretty heavily trafficked with trucks at one time. And the soil's got pretty good moisture, but if we try to put a shovel in, we can only get a little bit less than 10 centimeters without really starting to force it. This is one of the reasons why we need to focus on this deep tillage because heavy traffic, traffic of, with heavy vehicles can impact the soil to depths of 50, 60 centimeters. And the benefit of deep tillage is to work and act on all of that soil at depths below that kind of penetration. We're here today to look at the question of the benefits of soil restoration, particularly the physical restoration of soil to create a, improve the quality of traffic in soil from whatever purpose to restore its capacity to grow, grow plants, forests, the vegetation we want to establish on our sites. Over the years we looked at a range of tools and consequently developed a subsoiling tool for dozers capable of plowing to a depth of 90 centimeters. The question is how do we achieve that process of creating an environment where the freeze-thaw process really worked from the deep plowing with the reforestation plow to larger landscape like well sites and, and larger disturbances. So the whole objective of a rip plow was to work the soil create a lot of strain which is lift in the soil itself from the bottom upward so that we could leave topsoil in place because the subsoil is often fairly wet and to till the subsoil and spread topsoil is to negate the benefit. The question is, well why can't rippers do that? Well rippers are long narrow shank. And there's a critical depth that they've worked out through agriculture in which rippers actually break the soil outward from the shank. And that depth depends on how moist the soil is. And if the soil is really moist, we oftentimes only make a slit for the full length. So the drier the soil is, we get more of a V cracking from the shank going down to that depth. But at some point we hit a critic, what they refer to as a critical depth, below which all we have is a vertical slit in the soil. And in that process, what's really happening is the soil is actually flowing around the shank as the, as the shank is moving forward through the soil. With regard to best practices, a rip plow at the bottom, each one, and there's two of them on dozer, is about 60 centimeters wide. So it's working at the bottom of the furrow to raise the soil and push it outward just a bit to break it forward and laterally into itself. The second pass just accentuates the benefits of the first pass because it has a area to push the soil into a little better. This is an example of where, by plowing, the first pass we have our alignment straight but we have several passes here where the second pass was too close to the first pass and we see that we probably only achieved about 50 per 60 percent of the total benefit of plowing because we haven't maintained the equally space of the second pass. A dozer back down the track in this case between the furrows or assume that he was and then plowed a very close second furrow. So we have a lot of mixing in the two furrows, and we have gaps indicated by the native vegetation that existed in the last previous year coming in in essentially the unplowed ground. So we haven't gained the full benefit of the tillage here, even though we covered the ground. The whole process of enhancing the value of our tillage effect here from rip plows is to encourage the freezing and thawing of soil, which causes the soil to form ice crystals, expand, and break apart. But we see the same process occurring in wetting and drying in some soils, as evident right here, where you can see that this soil, as it's dried in this heavy clay, it has started to break apart and crumble down to fill the holes. 
And this is essentially the process that will occur deeper in these clods from freezing and thawing over the winter is that the whole process of forming ice limbs and layers of ice in the soil will do the same fracturing of the soil that drying did here on the surface. So we're essentially going to see over the course of winter this process occur as a result of freezing and thawing throughout the soil profile. One aspect of rip plows that people need to be aware of is that as we open these furrows with this plowing that can be to a depth of 80 centimeters with a medium sized D7 type dozer, we leave a, a, a distinct furrow as we've seen in many pictures. This is a case of where the soils are pretty wet and we made some large clods. But in all of the land, right after plowing, we tend to have some deep pockets right in the furrow itself is evident right here. And the large clods haven't closed this in. It makes it a risk for anybody walking here and working on these sites to actually step on a place and have a cave in under them and risk breaking a leg in a, in a hole or, or some kind of injury. But at the same time, by spring, we've already seen in the bottom of this hole loose soil starting to slough in from drying, but the freeze thaw process around will fill in most of these holes and most of this elevation will be lost by spring and the land after a winter of freeze thaw will be much safer to walk on.